Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, today we're going to talk about um, pharmacology and really just knowing your endings. Uh, this webinar is going to be in three parts, part one, part two, part three. That means three parts. Um, and we're going to um, kind of talk about different sections in each part. The first part is really kind of how to get started and go over the high yield, like hypertensive drugs. The next part, second part is antibiotics. And the third part really is just kind of a, a hodgepodge of other drugs kind of mixed in there. So let's go ahead and get started. Excuse me. First off, uh, my name is Kendall Wyatt. I am the pic, uh, uh, Pygmonics content director, so I manage all the content for everything. Um, I started out as a paramedic, went to nursing school, then went to med school, um, just finished up. But uh, so um, that's that's enough about me. You don't need to know about my stuff. Um, Pygmonic takes everything you need to know in nursing school and turns it into fun images. So nursing school, med school, PA school, basically anything medicine. So if you had a, um, a bipolar a disorder, you could remember it with something like this bipolar bear, which is really handy. Um, we cover lots of different topics for all the things you need to know. So um, first off, when we talk about this topic today, you know, it's kind of what are we going to do? We're going to um, talk about medication endings and some antihypertensives in, in part one. And like I said, part two is antibiotics. Part three is just going to be some, you know, other medications kind of in hodgepodge. And of course, as always, I always have my little magic cup here. Mm. One, because my mouth gets dry. Two, because I make three cents every time I shove that off. So whenever you do pharmacology, um, it's really important not to, not to really drive the home, but it's a lot of memorization. Um, there's tons of medications, so many things to remember, and I can tell you, you can maximize what you're learning just by learning the drug endings, and that's really what we're going to talk about today. All of the images and everything you see in our presentation today are all included on Picmonic's website. You can sign up for a free account at Picmonic.com, and there's some links down below. Um, so we're going to talk about, you know, there's so many different medications. We're going to talk about how to identify drug endings and memorize those, um, and then what you really want to know are just memorizing really key points. Um, you don't need to, um, at least at the nursing level, to mas master every single tiny little detail. Um, and you don't need to focus on like the big things, like does this medication cause nausea or vomiting? Well, almost every medication can cause nausea um, or upset stomach or GI distress or diarrhea, constipation. But does, you want to remember the, the obscure things. Does this medication cause a bowel ileus? Um, does this medication cause projectile vomiting? Um, or does it cause a cough? Does it cause, you know, what are the key ones or the signs and symptoms um, or the side effects, rather, of that particular medication? That's what's really important. When you look at pharmacology and drugs, you need to remember, again, key points. We're going to talk about drug endings today. You need to know the mechanism of action. So depending on what level you're at, if you're, you know, um, still starting out, you don't need to know great detail and physiology and tiny mechanisms of action. But if you're at a, a higher provider level or med school or MP, PA, you really need to know those mechanisms of action and all the physiology behind it. Um, you got to know why you're given the drug indication and those side effects, of course. Remembering high yield key fact side effects, that's what's important. Considerations are just extra things, um, some things we're going to talk about today um, and so that you can remember because they're important things you need to tell your patients. So let's get started with part one. Part one, um, we're really going to talk about mostly antihypertensives. We're not going to talk about every single one, but really the highest yield. If there's one thing you must know, no matter what level you're at, you've got to know every detail about these medications. There's no skipping here. So antihypertensives, we've got our ant wearing a tie with our hiker BP character for antihypertensives. And everything you're going to see here is consistent. Now the first one um, I like to always start off with is one of my favorites. It's beta blockers. Um, beta blockers, as soon as I say beta blockers, you should say beta blockers. You should say beta fish, right? And we've got here our character, which is a blue beta fish. Um, beta fish. Now, the way we're going to talk about, you know, staying in line are beta blockers and knowing the drug ending. Well, beta blockers always, a few rare exceptions, and for good reason, end in OLOL. So, OLOL, you need to remember that. Well, um, I like to remember here at Pygmonic, we have our blue beta fish sitting on these blocks for beta blocker. And then we've got, of course, licking a lollipop, a fish with lips licking a lollipop. Oh my goodness, I know, it's just great. I love our little beta fish here, it's so cute. But just by learning that right there, you can learn tons of different beta blockers. There's so many different ones. Look at this list of beta blockers here. There's so many different ones. And there are a couple of key ones that end in ALOL, which means they have alpha blo uh, blocking capability as well. But that's not what we're going to stick with today. Learning this, you can immediately learn a beta blocker. Now, it, there's one thing you should be thinking about. When I say beta blockers, 
what do you need to if, what do you need to be thinking about when I say beta blockers? What is the one thing you need to monitor or worry or watch for when I say beta blockers? I say beta, block, beta blockers. You say heart rate. That's right. You really got to worry about monitoring the heart rate because beta blockers cause a beta, beta block, and one of the things where we have a uh, a beta receptor block is for heart rate. Now, here's our beta blockers pygmonic. Um, you can learn this inside of our learning system. Lots of different things here, but uh, beta blockers, again, a beta fish on blocks with a lollipop, to remember that ending. We use beta blockers for um, hypertension, our hiker BP, heart failure, and um, angina, um, our little angel guy here. So you can remember that, and what you need to do is always check the heart rate. Now, I always get a, a nurse uh, that would come to me and say, um, well, what do I, if I get a low heart rate, I, I can't tell that patient not to take their medication. And you're right. At the nursing level, you can't say, you, you know, stop taking your medication. But you can tell them to hold a dose, and you can notify the provider. Um, anybody who's a practitioner would just say stop the medication, you know, or maybe we need to lower the dose or switch you to a different type of medication. All of these medications, beta blockers, there's a big one. What do we need to monitor for? for a, or what do, you, what do we need to be worried about with a patient who's on beta blockers? Well, we need to be worried about um, the fact that heart rate, number one, but also be worried about um, the fact that beta blockers can mask um, the signs of hypoglycemia. So we've got our little masked um, hippo glue bottle right here inside of Pygmonic, just a little cute little nugget right there. And what are those signs and symptoms? Well, beta blockers block beta receptors, and when they block beta receptors, they prevent the release of epinephrine. And that prevention of uh, epinephrine, when you get a, a low blood sugar, um, your body throws out a bunch of epinephrine, and when it throws out that epinephrine, it causes those systemic symptoms. What are what are they? Well, that's going to have a little bit of tachycardia, which is beta blocker blocks. You're going to have um, you're going to have a little bit of sweating, a little bit of diaphoresis, and you're not going to get those symptoms without that epinephrine um, because of the beta blocker. So it masks those signs of hypoglycemia. You need to remember. Also important not to give a beta blocker in a patient with a heart block. We've got our heart with blocks here wrapped in caution tape or for asthma because it can cause uh, bronchoconstriction. Um, just important points. All of the drugs, almost every drug really, um, you never really want to stop them cold turkey and all these ones we're going to talk about. You'd want to you know, taper them down or switch them to another medication. But in general, it's a bad idea to stop any medication um, right away. But there's a couple that you need to remember to taper um, as well, like steroids. So let's get started um, with the next one that I like, and that's ACE inhibitors. ACE inhibitors, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. Now, we, if you don't understand the renin angiotensin system, well, I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. You can go check out our other webinar. We got one on renal or lots of pygmonics on renal, tons of different things help you learn all those and all the drugs. But we're just going to talk about ACE inhibitors first. ACE inhibitors. Now, ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme, is in the lung, right? That's right. Um, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors prevent the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. So when I say ACE inhibitors, here we've got our wonderful little character, our ACE card with inhibiting chains, and we've got what? Well, we've got our little pearls because ACE inhibitors end in pril. That's right. So ACE inhibitors end in pril. So we've got the fun little pearls here with our ACE card with inhibiting chains. I mean, the little ACE card just got the little... Uh, chain there, poor little thing. Anyway, um, so ACE inhibitors, you need to remember PRIL, P-R-I-L. So you're going to learn lots of different ACE inhibitors just by memorizing the drug ending. But if I say ACE inhibitors, the first thing that should roll out of your mouth is what side effect do we have to watch for right away? I mean, it should be at the tip of your tongue. You should be spitting it out. Mm. Cough, that's right. Cough, a dry cough. ACE inhibitors, because of the an inhibiting ACE, uh, ACE it also is inhibits bradykinin. And bradykinin uh, basically causes a decrease of secretions or a decrease. Um, it allows for irritation basically in the, uh, in the throat and can cause this dry cough. Um, that's a number one reason we don't need to look for. It's a very high yield question um, and we'd want to switch them to what another type of medication. Mm -hmm. A really common thing is that a, a patient who has a, on an ACE inhibitor, um, if they get that dry cough, we're going to switch them to another medication. But before we do that, let's take a look at our ACE inhibitor pygmonic. So you can take a look here. Here's our ACE card. Again, um, our little Ren and Wrench um, character and our raspberries for an angiotensin system. But what are the other side effects of ACE inhibitors? Well, anytime you give an ACE inhibitor um, an antihypertensive, you worry about the opposite effect of what you're giving it for. So you may have hypotension or hippo BP. There's that coughing coffee pot right there with his dry mouth to help you remember cough for ACE inhibitors with pearls on the table for pril. 
Other things we see are hyperkalemia, our hiker banana character, and sometimes we'll see um, uh, angioedema, but not so common with ACE inhibitors. Other thing we're going to see with ACE inhibitors is a first dose effect, so a very first dose. So here we've got our slow turtle standing sort of slow position changes because you get that first dose effect where, you know, you may have a little bit of syncope on rising, so you want to tell them to raise up real slow. The next medication type um, after ACE inhibitors, if you had an ACE inhibitor and you needed to switch, you're going to get switched to an ARB or an angiotensin, angiotensin receptor blocker or angiotensin 2 receptor blocker. We just, that's why we call them ARBs. It's such a mouthful. So many, so many words. So ARBs um, are another type of medication, and you need to remember those by ending by what drug ending? Well, sartin. Um, low sartin, candesartin, valsartin, omelsartin, or whatever other sartins they make. There's too many. They're going to make some new sartins tomorrow, and you're just going to have to remember that one too, right? No, you're going to be able to just remember the drug ending. I don't know of any other sartins that aren't angiotensin receptor blockers. So easy to remember. And you can remember this with this crazy image here of our angel tennis receptor blocker here. Angel ten or angel tutu wearing receptor. Uh, I got my, my, my mouth is so tongue tied today. But angel, uh, this angel uh, playing tennis with her little receptor uh, blocks and she's wearing a tutu. So for an you know angiotensin two receptor blocker. But most importantly, you can remember this little Spartan character um, that he's playing with to help you remember Sartans, and that's going to really going to help you. So you can remember those endings. Now, with when I say angiotensin receptor blockers or ARBs, what's the thing you need to worry about? That side effect on the tip of your tongue. Well, the first one, the big one we see a lot, is really just um, remembering angioedema. So angioedema possible with ACE, ACE inhibitors, yes, but very possible with angiotensin receptor blockers. And here we've got our little angel edamame with lips. See that edamame little thing right there? Just so cute and wiggled. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Why are we doing that? Well, because that's what usually where you see angioedema. You usually see it in the lips. It's usually swelling in the lips, and you end up with those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's you're not gonna forget that, right? I know. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Just play it back and watch it again and again. And I don't mind. Anyway, that's what you worry about, angioedema, that swelling and, you know, uh, dilation of the face, a medical emergency for sure. Of course, um, other things, you know, we worry about a lot of um, these types of medica medications because um, we don't want to use them in pregnancy or they're cautioned in pregnancy for sure. Um, definitely a second line medication or uh, renal artery stenosis. Here we've got a little angel or sorry, our little stone kidney uh, vessel character for renal artery stenosis. Now, the next medication type I want to talk about, another, um, another type or class of medications are calcium channel blockers. I love calcium channel blockers because I just love this cute little cow. But anyway, calcium channel blockers, there's several different types. I'm going to talk about those in a sec. But calcium channel blockers, as far as an antihypertensive, you need to remember are the dipenes. Mm -hmm. Nifedipine, amlodipine, uh, nifedipine. That's right. You need to remember those right there. Now, with those, you can remember the dipenes, calcium channel blockers, and you can remember that those, this little cow character, right? Our calcium calcified cow with these little blocks, and of course, they're dipping their little chips. So, dipenes, you can help remember. So, um, the big thing to know with these is that when we talk about calcium channel blockers, especially if you're super smart, you would say, oh, well, that's not the only type of calcium channel blocker. And I'd say, oh, well, that means you're right. You're so smart. Ooh. So there are three different classes of calcium channel blockers. There's the ones for hypertension, which are the dipenes, the dihydropyridines. You don't need to know that dihydropyridine so much, but they're just the dipenes. The other ones are the uh, phenylalkamines. The phenylalkamines are verapamil. That's another one you've probably heard of. And the benzothiapines, which is diltiazem. Now, why do we use, why is there three different classes? Well, the easiest way to remember is that the dipenes are for hypertension, and that those are definitely vasoselective. Whereas verapamil and diltiazem are cardioselective or cardioselective and vasal, you know, they work on cardiac and um, the vessels, but mostly cardioselective. So they're going to work on the heart. So why do we use diltiazem? Oh, I just don't know. I just can't remember. I just, I've got this diltaser and this v wrapper in this, in this image. I just don't know why we use it. Well, that's why we have pigmonics, because they help you remember everything. Um, diltiazem is a cardioselective calcium channel blocker. We block calcium channels. We stop excitability we slow it down we calm it down calm down calcium you don't need to be get so excited getting all those channels excited um, so we usually see diltiazem used in atrial fibrillation for rate control 
um, verapamil we see often sometimes used in the same type of way. And of course, the dihydropyridines, the dipines we use for um, uh, for blood pressure. I can't, I'm just so tongue-tied today. Probably because I'm talking so fast, but luckily you can just play it over again. Anyway, here's our calcium channel blockers, Picmonic. So we've got our Diltaser and our V-Wrapper up here at the top with this cal calcified calc blocked. Now, what when I say um, amlodipine, nifedipine, and I talk about one of those calcium channel blockers, what's the number one side effect you should be looking for, especially um, no matter what level you're at? You should be looking for this common side effect. And what is it? Oh, my goodness, I don't know. Hypotension? No, or that's not the one I'm going to be trying to give you. That's, you know, that's the easy answer. If I'm giving you a medication for blood pressure, obviously a side, side effect is low blood pressure. Duh, right? That's not the one you're going to get. You're usually going to get peripheral edema. We see it all the time, peripheral edema. If you're on a calcium channel blocker for hypertension and you end up with this constant peripheral edema or edema in the legs, it's probably because of the calcium channel blocker. Super common. See it all the time. Now, the other one um, that we see, the really, um, the really uh, when we use deltiazem or especially verapamil, verapamil by itself usually causes what? Verapamil, we see, causes constipation. That's another side effect. So we got the little cork con toilet here inside of our image. And gingival hyperplasia. Uh, the only other time you see gingival hyperplasia, you should be thinking about seizure-type medications. That's right. Uh, but, um, of course, any type of calcium channel blocker can slow the heart rate down. But, um, you know, you want to worry about with those dihydropyridines, you want to worry about that peripheral edema because that's really common. Now, the next thing I want to talk about are loop diuretics. Now, I'm not going to talk about all the types of diuretics because we've got that literally in a whole in our renal webinar. There's a whole, we go through every single one of them. But we're just going to talk about loop diuretics first. Now, loop diuretics, um, loop diuretics are fun uh, because we've got our dye rocket spewing out urine uh, or yellow fluid if you're, you don't want to say the word urine out loud if it makes you nervous or, you know, you just say poop or something and then you freak out. Maybe you go to a naughty place or a bad place in your mind. You're just in the fetal position crying. But anyway, loop diuretics. Here we've got our loop hen. Now, what's important? Now, really, um, this is kind of a stretch for us on the ending because it's not really a drug ending for, um, for all loop diuretics. But I just want to talk the few ones you're going to get. So you're going to see semi, S-E-M-I-D-E. -E, um, and that's where you've got furosemide and torsemide. And I've got these other two here in red because they're different. But furosemide or Lasix, don't use that tra um, trade name. Always remember the you know the generic name. Always remember that. Really important. So we got our loop die rocket hen on this um, you know this semi truck spewing out urine. And why is it spewing out so much urine? Because loops are very powerful diuretics. Now, just really quick, ethacrinic acid. I mean, that's such a weird one. Well, let's just talk about why you need to remember the different ones. Like, why is ethacrinic acid? Why is it different? because it's spelled differently, because it's two words. I mean, I don't know. Well, the reason is because ethacrinic acid is literally a loop diuretic, but it's the weird one. Remember, it's a weird name, and it has a weird name for the reason, in my opinion, and I remember that it has a weird name because it doesn't have salt. It's not, uh, it doesn't, uh, you can give it to a person with sulfa allergy. There's no sulfa allergy interaction. Whereas loop diuretics, you can't give to a patient who has a sulfa allergy. Really common, uh, really common, really common question we see. So here's our loop diuretic picmonics. Now, I'm not going to go through each of the details, but there's a couple really important points when we talk about giving loop diuretics. The first off are that when we give any diuretic, it basically makes you pee a lot, right? I mean, you're, you're urinating more. Now, when you're urinating more, um, you're losing more things. Now, I always love loops lose everything. Um, and when I say loops lose everything, I mean you're peeing out all those electrolytes, you're peeing out everything. And what's that little old volatile scaredy electrolyte that just gets so scared and gets all out of whack every single time? Which one is it? Ooh, a scaredy electrolyte. I don't know. Potassium. And I always just like to remember potassium. Potassium's in bananas. Ban bananas go so bad so quick. You know a weirdo that doesn't like to eat a brown banana? <laughs> Actually, I do. It's Marley. She works here at Picmonic with me, and she loves brown bananas. What a freak. Who wants to eat brown bananas? Oh, you can send them here to the Picmonic office, and Marley will eat them if you get some brown bananas. Fine. Anyway, with that, little volatile electrolyte. And with that, you see you pee out extra potassium. We see it with loops. But loops lose everything. Remember that. Loops lose everything. So you're going to pee out potassium first. It's going to be the first one you're going to pee out because it's just scaredy electrolyte. 
then you're going to see loops losing calcium. That's really, really important. Loops lose calcium. Um, so loops lose calcium. Why do I tell you that? Well, it pees out everything because I'm going to talk about the difference in a second. Now, with loop diuretics, if you're giving them for a long period of time or a high dose IV, um, what do we worry about? What's the thing we're going to be watching for? You know, we're going to be watching for, you're looking for out there, like what's going on? I don't know. Well, we're going to be watching for ototoxicity. I'm going to pull my shirt down, sorry. <laughs> Um, ototoxicity, 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 toxic ears. Yes, we've got our toxic green glow here inside of our pygmonic, but you're going to be worried about tinnitus or ringing of the ears. That's going to be that sign for a patient who's on potassium, I mean, sorry, a, um, a loop diuretic drip or getting a high dose IV. So with all this, lots of things to go with loop diuretics. What's the big thing we're going to worry about next? What's the next type of diuretic we want to talk about? Well, that's going to be um, thiazide diuretics. Now, we're going to talk about thiazide diuretics in a second, but remember that thiazide diuretics are different because they don't lose calcium. That's why we remember, if you remember that, loops lose everything, loops lose calcium. So you have hypocalcemia, whereas a thiazide diuretic, no change. So that's it for part one. We're really just moving straight on to part two. It's no different for me, but if you're switching videos, um, you need to switch over to part two. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click over to get to the next video. Just make sure you just show us some love. We accept free candy. Marley likes brown bananas. Um, and just about, you know, I don't know, just love. Just send us comments. But if you're angry and you just want to say mean things, just go home. Just close your laptop or something. I, just don't watch. I'm not making you watch. It's fun, right? So we'll see you in part two. We're going to talk about antibiotics. Um, and to continue on, pharmacology, knowing your endings. We'll see you over there.